Captain Austin Jenks was one of Stillwater's most colorful characters. He was born in New York State, then as a young man moved west with his parents, settling in Albany, Illinois, not far from the Mississippi. The logging industry drew him north to Stillwater, and in partnership with his brother-in-law, David Hanks, he piloted huge log rafts to any point on the Mississippi River between St. Paul and Memphis. It was tough, physical work. The crews pulled on oars, sometimes 40 feet long, keeping them in the main channel, away from shoals and islands. Mark Twain wrote about them. I remember the annual processions of mighty rafts that used to glide by Hannibal when I was a boy, an acre or so of white, sweet-smelling boards in each raft, a crew of two dozen men or more, three or four wigwams scattered about the raft's vast level space for storm quarters, and I remember the rude ways and the tremendous talk of their big crews. The pilot was the most important person in this business, having to know the river with all its bends and snags. And a top pilot could earn good money, more than $1,000 a month in the 1870s. In 1871, looking to reduce the cost of a large crew, Jenks constructed a steamer, the Brother Jonathan. It was just the second steamer built for rafting logs on the upper Mississippi, and the growing business helped to secure his financial future. A few years later, after he joined the competing firm of Durant, Wheeler & Company, it appears that Austin left behind his days as a river captain to settle down as a businessman, traveling between Stillwater and a home in Illinois. He married three times. The last and longest marriage in 1866 was to Harriet Bennett, his first wife's sister. With Harriet, he had two daughters, Geneva and Grace. By 1879, Jenks's business interests had widened, and he was ready to move permanently to Stillwater. That fall, he returned to town to begin work on a new home on South Hill ordering up stone from quarries in Frontenac. It is an unusual home. The basic form reflects the Italian villa style popularized by Andrew Jackson Downing's plan books with the cruciform plan and tall square tower. But other details are eclectic, including the Gothic influence shown in the gable end trusses and the tall paired windows. Combined with a Second Empire style mansard tower roof. The craftsmanship of the interior woodwork illustrates the skill of local carpenters and woodworkers. In addition to his lumbering interests, Captain Jenks invested in a new grand opera house on Main Street in 1879. The St. Paul Pioneer Press declared the hall a noble architectural achievement being a skillful and tasteful combination of Queen Anne, Victorian, and Gothic. In other words, like Captain Jenks' house, it combines several architectural styles. Progressing from river pilot to captain to businessman to financier, Jenks became one of the city's most important men. He was president of the town's Board of Education and served as a bank director. He helped to organize the Stillwater Electric Light Company, and in fact his home was one of the city's first to be lit by incandescent electric lamps. After his death in 1902, historian A.B. Easton wrote of Jenks, He loved kindness, for his was a kindly nature. He loved honor, for he was one of nature's noblemen. Looking up, one can almost picture the captain standing in the tower, looking out on the river that he loved. ¶¶